All right, so part two. Um, now that we know how to do the centers, we've got to learn how to build the edges. And uh, this is where most of your time will be spent when you're solving a 5x5 five five is with, these, with the edges. Um, the reason being is there are a lot of edges on one of these. So um, I'm going to teach you two different methods for this. One of them is easy to do, but it's not so quick. The next one's a bit tricky, but it's much faster. So let's go over the first one, and you'll actually recognize the first one as the method I taught in my former force tutorial called double pairing. Okay, so the basic premise behind this method is that we're trying to just find two pieces of the match, like this blue and white, and this blue and white. We're going to break the centers to make a pair. Then we're going to ditch that pair in the top or the bottom, and, um, you know, restore our centers. Uh, I'll give you another example of that, I guess. This blue and red, and this blue and red. Match them up, get them out of the way, and restore our centers. And you can see that um, here they are safely in the top. One more example of that. This green and white, and this green and white. Match them, get them out of the way and restore our centers. Now, you can actually take that one step further and get two um, edges at once. And that's why the method's called double pairing in the first place. So let's see. Um, like for example, you see this uh, yellow and pink, and this yellow and pink, and also Keep in mind uh, what the piece we move out of the way is. In this case, it's red and white. So what I'm going to do is really quickly find red and white and just keep an eye on it. So I see that, um, well, why don't I actually move into the top so I can explain it a bit better. So we can easily pair up these two pieces, the um, yellow and pinks. Easily, no problem. I don't think anyone has any problem with that. But keep in mind that we always move a piece back, this red and white. So if we can anticipate that and get the other red and white ready, we can get two pairs out of the deal. Just watch, if that doesn't make sense. We're going to get the one pair, like this, and then we're going to move this out of the way and replace it with the other red and white. And on the way back, we'll get the second pair here. So that's what double pairing is all about. We'll get two pairs at once, and uh, it's a really solid method but it runs into problems with you're always looking for something. You're always looking for a next piece. And when you're speed solving, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking around. Anyways, I'll give you one more example of um, the double pairing. Uh, this green and red, this green and red, this pink and uh, yellow is good to go, and this pink and yellow is in the right spot. Uh, this can be actually wherever you want it to be. I always choose just to put it in the top because it's easy for me to find then. So, make the first pair. Replace it with what will make the second pair and restore our centers. And that'll get us that. So that's that method. Um, don't think anyone will have any problems with that. Now let's learn the real man's method for pairing the edges. Um, this method's a lot faster. It's a bit tricky though to get used to. Um, unlike with double pairing, you don't have a lot of freedom with how you move the pieces. During double pairing, you can move any piece wherever you want. You don't have to pay attention to what's done. You don't have to do anything. Um, everything will just fix itself, and it's amazingly easy. Now, for this method, which I'll call the storage method. I don't know what it's called, but uh, storage method is a good name for it, I guess. With this method, you have to pay attention to your top and your bottom. you got to pick a top and a bottom, and I choose yellow and white for that. So you pick a top and a bottom, and those are the layers in which you're going to store pieces that are complete. You're always going to be working around the circumference. So this is how it works. Basically, your first move is going to be you're going to try to find uh, two pieces that match. I already looked at this cube earlier, and I noticed that these are the only pieces that match already. These uh, green, green and yellows. And I brought this green and yellow here so that it's ready to show you. Basically, with this method, you're going to make 
an entire uh, set all at once. So we got all these green yellows all at once, and then we're just going to ditch them into the top or the bottom for storage. We're not going to restore our centers after that either. You can, but it's not necessary and it takes extra time, so it's kind of a waste. So now I'm just looking for the next thing. And I see, uh, I see this uh, orange and blue, this orange and blue, and this orange and blue. And I see that um, these two on the outsides are ready to match, but this one isn't. So I'm just going to flip this one around. And then we can match all three. Match that one, and match that one. And now it's done, I can put it in the top for storage. Look for the next thing. I see... I see two green and whites which are ready to go, so I gotta find something. Here it is in the bottom here. Place it in, in the middle areas with the rest of them. And build my set. Put it up in the top for storage. And the next one, I see these two blue and uh, blue and yellows here. And the next one, oh, I guess it's in the top. So I'm just going to get this into the middle layers and make a set and dish it in the top for storage. Now there's only one spot that's still empty, and I got to get it into there. So again, Sort of like with the centers thing, I gotta line it up with something that's already done, replace it, move the empty spot over here, and then bring this back. Now the top is completely full. Um, also, notice how I never restore the centers. Um, well, sometimes it happens, or just by chance, but I don't restore the centers after every single one. And that's because you don't have to, because when, once you're done, it's always just a couple of moves. The centers are no big deal to get back to the original position. Uh, you can restore them all the time if you want, but it doesn't help you out. It'll actually make you slower. So the top is done. I'll flip it around and make that the bottom. And now I've got to fill up the uh, the new top, I guess. So what I see here is these uh, these blue and reds. This blue and red. But I know that I have to flip this one up here so I can actually get that into there. So I'll just flip this around like this. Bring it in here. I'm going to flip this one around and bring this back here. And then I'll put that in storage. 